Welcome back to my channel. I'm Sherry. Can you believe that Christmas is less than two weeks away? Are you ready? Do you have your shopping done? Well, in case you don't, I have 15 easy DIY projects to share with you today. Your friends and family will love these unique gifts and stocking stuffers, and you'll have so much fun making them. I know I did. Well, Christmas is coming, so let's get started. This first project is very similar to the little book ornaments that I made in my Christmas ornament video. For this project, you'll need some notebooks or planners from the Dollar Tree. Find and print out book cover images from your recipient's favorite books. To print the image in a size to fit your notebook, use a sizing app like Print to Size. Once you've printed out the image, cut it out and use Mod Podge to attach it to the front of your notebook. When the Mod Podge is dry, apply a protective top coat. It's not necessary, so you can skip this step if you like. The cover on this notebook was slick and shiny, and so I sanded it to rough it up so that the paper would adhere better. I chose this purple notebook because its color matched my image and I wouldn't have to cover the back. I liked the idea that this notebook, because it looks like a novel, could serve as a secret diary for my niece, and so I made a little label that I Mod Podged inside the front cover. I added a top coat of Mod Podge because I wanted this notebook to stand up to some wear and tear. Karen Hood, a sweet viewer, sent me this picture of little notebooks that she made using the images from my Christmas ornament video and miniature composition notebooks from Dollar Tree. Karen did such a great job on these. They were so cute that I decided I wanted to make a few using some non-Christmas images. For these, I printed out some color-coordinated rectangles to cover the back of each of the little notebooks. This little roller or brayer is from Amazon and is helpful in removing wrinkles in various decoupaging projects. To create an easy hanging dish towel, take a scrap of fabric and cut a rectangle about 10 inches long and 5 inches wide. Fold the edges over and either hot glue or sew them in place. Or you could sew two rectangles of fabric together. Put the right sides facing one another, stitch up three sides, turn it right side out and then stitch the fourth side closed. Iron on two strips of Velcro, one at each end of the rectangle about an inch and a half from the end. Fold your dish towel in half lengthwise and make a crease along that middle line. Fold the two sides of the towel over to the back until they meet at that crease line. Keeping the sides folded to the back, fold the towel in half lengthwise, making the front half about a half an inch longer than the back half. Create pleats along the top edge of your towel by folding the fabric back and forth in your fingers. While pinching the pleats together, take one end of your fabric rectangle and wrap it around the pleats and then hot glue it in place. First, I glued the sides of the towel to the fabric rectangle, and then I glued along the back pleats, and finally, I glued along the front pleats. 
I wanted to dress the towels up, and so I hot glued on some buttons and some rickrack. But if this is going to be an everyday towel that gets used a lot, I would probably leave these off. Be sure to iron on the Velcro strips before applying any hot glue to the fabric. Otherwise, you'll have bleed through like I did on this green fabric. Here is another easy no-sew gift idea. Tape a piece of lightweight cotton fabric to a piece of cardstock and put in your printer. Print images onto the fabric the same way that you would for paper. You should iron the fabric first because the ink will smudge any place there's a wrinkle. Cut out the images, leaving a half inch border around all four edges. Cut out a second piece of fabric to the exact same size. Attach the two pieces of fabric together to create a small pillow by applying hot glue to three of the edges. Sprinkle your favorite essential oil onto a small amount of pillow stuffing and then put the stuffing inside your little sachet. Then hot glue the fourth edge together. You can stop there, or if you like, you can add some little embellishments like bows or little jingle bells. Here is a fun idea for dressing up an old thrift store jewelry box. I picked this one up for just a couple dollars. I also thrifted a Christmas village house, which I sprayed with a couple coats of white spray paint. After removing the handles from the little drawers, I painted the jewelry box with three coats of white chalk paint. When the paint was dry, I lightly distressed the edges with 220 grit sandpaper, and then I applied a coat of clear wax, wiping the excess off with a rag. I replaced the handles on the little drawers, and then I placed the house on the top of the jewelry box and traced around it in pencil. I applied a good amount of hot glue to the bottom of the house and then lined it up with the pencil markings on the top of the jewelry box. I painted the house with a coat of the same white chalk paint I had used on the jewelry box so that they would match perfectly. When the paint was dry, I went around the base of the house again with the hot glue, sprinkling fake snow on while the glue was still hot. Then I glued on a few small trees and animals and sprinkled fake snow at the base of each of these too. I brushed a little Mod Podge in a few spots on the roof and then sprinkled on some iridescent glitter. I inserted a string of fairy lights through the hole in the back of the house and then hot glued the battery pack to the back of the jewelry box. I cleaned the inside of the jewelry box using a little upholstery cleaner. Here are two fun gift ideas for people who love their pets. Print out a picture of the pet on regular copy paper in a size large enough to cover the front of a house-shaped wood block. Apply Mod Podge to the wood block and to the back of the image and adhere the two together. 
When the Mod Podge is dry, cut off the excess paper, then smooth the edges with a little sandpaper. Apply another coat of Mod Podge to the top to protect the image. As a finishing touch, add a little collar, ribbon, or bell. For another idea, print out the image of just the animal's head on a small piece of fabric. You might want to use an app that has a background remover, such as Canva. Cut out a second piece of fabric the same size. Place the image face down on your surface. Then, take your glue gun and begin outlining the image with a small thread of hot glue and then pressing the second piece of fabric into that hot glue. Leave the next side open. Cut away the excess fabric, making sure that you are cutting along the outside edge of the hot glue. Fill the animal head about halfway full of pillow stuffing. Apply hot glue to the end of a pen or pencil and then insert it into the animal head. Add additional hot glue to the inside of the animal head, gluing the bottom edges of the fabric to the side of the pen. Glue a strip of ribbon around the animal's neck to hide the end of the fabric and to create the illusion of a collar. If you grew up in the 70s, you likely remember these sugar-frosted pillar candles. Well, a viewer asked if I could try to duplicate them. So here goes. I bought three pillar candles from Dollar Tree and then printed out three vintage images in sizes to fit the candles. I applied Mod Podge both to the jar and to the back of the image and then adhered the two together, smoothing out any wrinkles. I considered several options for frosting the glass jars, but settled on regular table salt and sugar as being the most similar to the original 1970s candles. I brushed on Mod Podge hard coat to the outside of the first candle and then rolled it in a pan of table salt. I was disappointed to discover that the salt stuck on thicker in some spots and not at all in other spots. So I decided to try sugar on the second candle. After applying a coat of the Mod Podge hard coat to the outside of the glass jar, I rolled it in the pan in the same manner as I had with the salt, but it adhered perfectly. Somehow the sugar seemed smoother and softer than the salt. I rolled the third candle in the pan of sugar and again it adhered beautifully. The Mod Podge hard coat did a great job of adhering both the salt and the sugar to the glass jar and there was almost no shedding after the glue was dry but I wanted to see what would happen if I applied a second top coat. So I applied a top coat to two of the three candles so I could compare the difference. Once the top coat dried, the sugar became more opaque and less sparkly, so my preference is to use sugar with no top coat. Here is a fun way to create a unique vase. Print out your favorite image or picture on regular copy paper, 
in a size to fit the back of a glass bottle or jar that you have on hand. After the printer ink is dry, apply Mod Podge to the front of the image and then apply the image to the back of the bottle or jar, smoothing out any wrinkles. When the Mod Podge is dry, apply another coat of Mod Podge along the back of the image and then sprinkle on iridescent glitter or if you happen to have a pan of sugar lying around, you can press the jar or bottle into the sugar. Add your favorite stems or flowers and a bow, and you have a one-of-a-kind vase. Last week, several viewers asked about my light-up pillow, so I wanted to show you how you can easily make one for yourself. You'll need a pillow cover with a zipper. I'm using a $3 thrift store pillow. To create an easy Christmas design, I cut five different sized triangles from some scraps of snowman fabric that I had. Then I ironed the triangles to a sheet of fabric fusion. Once the fabric was adhered, I cut out the triangles and arranged them on the pillow cover. I peeled the paper backing off the fabric fusion and ironed the triangles to the pillow cover. They adhere in just a few seconds. I turned the pillow cover inside out and arranged a small strand of fairy lights. I wanted the lights to look like stars at the top of each triangle, so I bundled a few lights together with white ribbon and then hot glued the ribbon to the back of the pillow cover. I made sure that the on-off switch for the lights was right inside the top of the zipper. Then I replaced the pillow insert and turned on the lights. This pillow only took me about 15 minutes to make. For the next project, you will need a small fabric drawstring bag from Dollar Tree, but because my Dollar Tree is out of them, I sewed mine from some scrap fabric. I cut out a rectangle and folded over one of the long edges and stitched it in place. Then I folded the rectangle in half, and with the folded hem along the top, I stitched the other two sides. I turned the bag right side out and cut two small slits along the top on either side of the side seam. Using a safety pin, I ran a strand of twine through the top hem, leaving about six inches of twine on both sides that can be pulled to tighten the bag. To create a tic-tac-toe board on the front of the bag, I ironed a sheet of fabric fusion to a piece of brown felt. Once the fabric fusion was adhered to the felt, it was very easy to cut into small strips. I arranged the strips to create a tic-tac-toe board and ironed them to the front of each bag. You can use Christmas erasers, buttons, jingle bells, or any small item for the markers. Store the markers inside the drawstring bag.
For the next project, paint a Dollar Tree crate in the color of your choice. Cut a small piece of wood or a popsicle stick to the width of the crate. Use wood glue or super glue to attach the popsicle stick across the bottom of the crate. Drill holes in the top of the crate for a twine hanger. Paint the popsicle stick to match the rest of the crate. When the paint is dry, you can distress it with some 220 grit sandpaper if you like. Add some greenery and a candle inside the crate. I also added a miniature tree ornament. Originally, I used a real candle, but replaced it with a battery-operated one. For a realistic look, I put the small battery light on top of a real votive candle. Here is a gift idea for repurposing an old cookie tin. Hand paint or spray paint the tin with your favorite paint. Then, using a thin piece of wood or a sturdy piece of cardboard, trace around the bottom half of the tin. Cut out the half circle using an appropriate tool. A jigsaw if you're using wood a utility knife and scissors for cardboard. Smooth the edges of the half circle with sandpaper. Use hot glue or super glue to attach the half circle to the bottom of the tin. If you used cardboard, glue some wood blocks behind the cardboard to add stability, and then paint the cardboard to match the tin. Now you can decoupage an image to your tin if you like, I used some transfers that IOD was kind enough to send me. I was eager to try them out, and I chose a floral design, which I applied to the cardboard and to the inside and outside of the tin. I cut out several different little images and hobbled them together, and they worked beautifully. The transfers are super easy to use and made the tin look so high-end. I inserted some styrofoam behind the cardboard and then added some fake succulents and florals. I also hot glued a strip of white rickrack along the edge of the cardboard. Finally, I drilled some holes at the top of the tin for twine so I could hang this little planter. We've all seen the idea of framing pretty gift bags to create cheap wall art, but I think we can take it up a notch. Cut off the back side of the gift bag and then choose some of the elements from the picture to pin to coordinating fabric. Cut out those shapes using the pictures on the bag as your pattern. Apply Mod Podge to those identical shapes on the front side of the bag and then adhere the cut out fabric shapes. I also embellished other parts of the bag by gluing on little glitter balls, sparkly confetti, and small plastic stars. Instead of using a frame, I adhered the front of the bag to a wood tray I found in my stash. I used spray adhesive to hold it in place. 
I decided to hot glue some sparkly pipe cleaners around the inside edges of the tray and to add a pretty bow. I even covered the holes in the bag from the handle with some small embellishments. These last two ideas are fun gifts for the candy lovers on your list. I purchased all of my candy at Dollar Tree. Print out the Grinch label that I created to fit across the top of a small Ziploc bag, about six inches wide. Fill your bag with green M&Ms or any other green colored candy. Then tape or staple the label across the top of your bag. Because I didn't have many M&Ms, I folded my bag in half and reduced the labels to three inches wide. For reindeer noses, print out the labels that I found online. Then pour a bag of Whoppers into your Ziploc bag and add just one red candy or gumball for Rudolph. Attach the labels to your bag. So is your Christmas shopping done? I hope it is. But if it isn't, then I hope I shared an idea today that you can use. I personally love silly gifts that make people smile. So the little cat pillow on top of an ink pen was my favorite project today. Please drop me a comment and let me know which one was your favorite. Well, that's all for today. Thank you so very much for watching. I hope you have a great week. Until next Tuesday, bye-bye for now.